All right, so, uh, you know, what we just learned, we know that shorthand notation is how we want to initialize a variable um, unless we are wanting to just declare a variable and have it um, initialized to a zero value, then we'd use var. So we have a shorthand notation to create a variable intro, which is assigned to this string. Um, and if we, uh, you know, the next thing is just to print out intro and then to look at the slice of, you know, bytes. And so that's the same thing that we saw on the slide. So there we have, you know, the value of uh, our variable, the, which is that string. And then we have the slice of bytes right here. And we can see from our ASCII table that uh, 70, so go back to our slides, 70 translates to, you know, right here, that capital F, right? That's what that 70 translates to. And so uh, a couple things which are interesting about that, just to, um, you know, play with it. I think, did we see this in class last week? So I could do printf. And did we talk about uh, the difference between print line versus print f versus sprint f? You guys all know those differences? Cool. So string print with formatting, file print with formatting, or just print with formatting. So I'm going to do print with formatting. And, uh, and we have that formatting verb, percent %t. And then I'm going to add a new line uh, after it. Like, hey, add in a new line there. And, uh, you know, so it's a, a, a return afterwards. And I want to see the type of intro. And then I'm going to copy that and just move it down. And if you're watching that and you're like, whoa, that was magic. How would you just move it, right? I did a command D. So I did a command D and it copies a line in WebStorm. And then option shift. And my arrow key allows me to move lines up and down. So it's just WebStorm, command D to copy a line, duplicate a line. And option shift, arrow key, lets me move lines around. So I think those are nice little shortcuts. So now if I run those types, that's kind of interesting. I can see, okay, it's a type string, and it's still a type string. Right? It's not, it's not a, a slice of bytes. Because right here I didn't set it to anything, right? But what if I was to do this? I was, I kind of, that was just a coding flaw right there, because I meant it to be this. And so there we have a slice of uint8. Hmm, interesting. And so again, we learned that thing about variables. What are the two things that variable is, you know, wanting to convey or tell us? Yeah, size and representation. Size and representation or size and, size and type. Yeah, so this is a, you know, a slice of bytes, right? A slice of UN8, and a byte is 8. So that's kind of cool, just to kind of take a look at. All right, so that's the first thing, which is kind of fun to do here. And then here's the next thing, which I think is fun to do. So I'm just going to do a, a little bit of a divider to show, hey, here's some new stuff I'm doing. And copy this, and then move that down. And I'm going to... Take my string, um, I'll leave it as a slice of bytes, and I want to print out the slice of bytes. Right now, how are my slice of bytes printing out? So here, here, here's my slice of bytes. How would you characterize these digits? Would you characterize them as what? How would you describe those digits? Base 2, base 10, base 16. Decimal, decimal, right? Base ten, decimal, yeah. right? So those are decimal, and so I could I could put in the the formatting verb d percent d, and I should see the same thing. So um, let me just clear that and run it, and same thing, decimal. All right, well let's try this. B for binary, base two, decimal, and then uh oh, didn't like that. Right? I'm trying to take a slice of bytes and, uh, and change the entire slice of bytes into binary. And it's like, no, you need to, I think, operate on each number. So I'm just playing here, but let's see what happens when I do for, for uh, key value, colon equals, colon equals range. And uh, I want to range over my slice of bytes. So maybe I'll set this to a variable. Um, 
bs colon equals my slice of bytes. And then that will be bs. This will be bs. And uh, so we're going to range over my slice of bytes. And, uh, and then I don't really need like what is the, this could also be the increment, right? I don't really need the like 0, 1, 2, 3 times through the loop. So I'm just going to throw that variable away. But I will do the value. And so I'm thinking this will give me the value that's inside um, of, uh, of that slice of bytes. So does that code right there make sense to everybody? On 15, 16, and 17, what's happening there? Anybody that doesn't make sense to you need to walk through that a little bit. Raise your hand. Cool. So uh, let's see what happens. That looks nice, right? So it took all these numbers here and then just started looping through them and printing them. And it printed them in decimal. Right? Well, let's do instead of uh, a new line, let's do a tab. And then we will do a percent binary and add a tab in after that. Let's double tab just in case. And then we need to do that with V again, right? Because V here with with print formatting, this first request here, I want to format something, keys into the first variable. And then the second thing I want to format something, keys into the second variable that gets passed, right? So every time I add some sort of formatting thing in, in my first uh, argument here, the string, I need to add a variable that will go into that spot. Uh, you know, that, that's how that works. So let's see what happens. Oh, that kind of is funky because I need a new line after this one. Let's see if that cleans it up. Sorry, command K, that cleaned it up. All right, so here is 70 represented in decimal, and here's that same 70 represented in binary. And so that arrangement of zeros and ones is the arrangements of on and offs that represent the capital F. So what happens when you go beyond the ASCII and you go into UTF-8? Does it increase your, show you an increase of bytes? So if you were to print out a character that's beyond ASCII, it should print out a larger set of bytes. Right, yeah. Right, if you go past, like, because it's... Uh, if you go into a foreign character or something, okay. it should so let's, show you a... Yeah, like if we had a Chinese character in there or something. Yeah. Um, I think it... So, uh, sorry, I have something coming back to me. So UTF-8 uh, stores up to four bytes. So a string will store up to four bytes for a character. And I don't know how that all works, what the internals are of that. But, um, you know, Chinese characters probably are using four bytes... In English is one byte, so we might see. I don't know, we could throw a Chinese character in there and see what happens. Um, go lang. Dot org. And uh, hello Chinese. And um, we'll just do four, so we don't have a whole bunch of stuff to look at. What's the backslash T do again? Tab. Okay. Yeah. And so now we've got all that. Let's take a look, see what happens. So uh, string four, here's F-O-U-R space. And, uh, and then here's, it's three bytes to represent that character. And, um, you know, those are just U and eight. So maybe in the first byte, there's some sort of data that says, I got two bytes behind me, baby. <laughs> Make sure you look at all through, all three. That's probably the first flag or the. No. Maybe I don't know. There's a really good UTF-8 video I found once we should watch about oh, yeah? understanding UTF-8 because it's such an important concept. Cool. Yeah. Let it. Yeah. If you yeah. can find it again, I'll let's watch it. it. Yeah. Let's watch it. Because it talks oh. about I think what we're talking about. Yeah, I see it. So the first flag for the. 
See how they are, they all have an extra one? That means the one at the end right there, the the one at the left end. Left end those right here is an extra one. Maybe, but I think that that's two twenty eight and bin. That's two twenty eight and binary. Yeah, so we're just going up the scale. Well, yeah, but it's that's what. I mean. So why are there three? For that one symbol, because it takes more data to store that. Yeah. Because you can move beyond the ASCII. The ASCII is only going to need eight, but anything beyond ASCII needs a more zeros and ones directed. Yeah, we could only go up to uh, um, 127, right? It's just the seven bits are used for character representation in ASCII. And, uh, and then after that, you need, I guess, another byte. But back in the English-centric days of coding with very limited memory, so I don't... took three bytes? Yeah, for a Chinese character, it took three bytes. Wow. I don't know if you guys saw this on Reddit. I don't know if it's still even up there. Uh, it was up there at lunch. Let me see if I can see it. Oh, here we go. This is a five megabyte hard drive being shipped by IBM. I saw that on Reddit. Five megabyte hard drive, 1956. Five megabytes. <laughs> So, if you have a zero in the beginning, that means it's one byte long. If you have, yeah, if you have the like, if you have certain extra ones at the beginning of the byte, that makes it take up more bytes. Mm. So the actual number of the Chinese characters was not represented by that number that you printed out because the first byte has to, or the first bit has to be taken off. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Say it again. So what's, what's the... I can't explain it very well. It's really... All right. So a cool little exercise and uh, just showing you how these numbers go back can be... You know, these numbers like 70 is the decimal representation of you know these ones and zeros and those ones and zeros just represent on and off right so we got on off 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 on on off and that's how we store f and and i guess we're only printing out three six seven right here right and that's uh you know ascii ascii stuff the first 127 but it's a probably it's a, it's a byte that's being stored in memory i say with 87 percent certainty <laughs> like bytes get stored in memory in blocks. That's one of the things that they talked about the training that I didn't 100% grab, but I'm pretty sure that's how zeros and ones get stored is in byte chunks. And uh, and then that all translates back, like you know these zeros and ones and everything. We looked at that table the other day um, for you know how do we convert from decimal to binary, the binary numbering system, and then hexadecimal. I added that on there. And so this is base 16, and so the first thing you should think is 16 to the 0, 16 to the 1, 16 to the 2, 16 to the 3. Just like when we had base 10 is 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, and that's how we got our 1s, 10s, 100s. Or base 2, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. That's the first thing you think is like, what's my base? And let me take it up to the exponent, just, you know, sequentially going up from 0. And then I find out my places, 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s. And if it's base 2, you can work with two digits in each placeholder. If it's base 10, you can work with 10 digits in each placeholder, 0 through 9. And if it's base 16, you can work with 16 digits in each placeholder, 0 through 9. And then because we can't have two digits in each placeholder, 0 through 9. And then A through F representing 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we have 0 through 15, or 16 digits we can work with in each placeholder. But that's how we get hexadecimal. You might ask, why do we use hexadecimal? I could come back to this, this program. And, and uh, you know, say I also want to print this in hex. And so just duplicate that and make this one hex. And so that will print it in hex. And this will print it with hex notation, that little 0x thing, putting that little pound sign right there. And, uh, and huh? 
Er, er, e, oh. What just crashed? Let me put that and make that a tab. You have to put it under a V, right? A V? Oh, thank you. I'm like, what are you talking about, a V? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Perfect, there we go. And so there's the hexadecimal representation. And, uh, you know, hexadecimal is... Um, is great when you have really large numbers. So if we had y pretty big number That's what it takes to write that number in binary, <laughs> right? This is what it takes to write that number in decimal, and here's what it takes to write that number in hexadecimal. So, you know, the, the, there's some character, it's a little bit shorter in the characters you write here than here just to represent that. And so when you look at memory addresses, right, a lot of times, like, where is, uh, where is uh, Y stored? All right, what's the memory address of Y? And the memory address is going to be hexadecimal right there. And so, you know, it's just how we keep track of memory addresses. Just a location. So how many people like that little exercise? I think that's really fun. You know, like I didn't come to computer science or programming through a computer science background. And uh, it actually has taken me... 44 years to sort of wrap my head around how computers work. I didn't have the benefit of the formal training. I don't know, do you guys get this in your other classes? Have you taken other computer science classes yep. where they've been like, this is how it all works? I wish I'd studied that. Because I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> Nobody showed it to me. All right. Um, yeah, well, it goes goes uh, extremely powerful. So you know, I mean, anything you, you could. Try it because you could look at a compiled version of a program and see if you could break out the. Right but you pieces. can do that with any. Language. Yeah, any language. It's not too helpful, I think. Well, really time and effort because you have to it. because you have to deobfuscate the. Of things in code. Look on GitHub, see if there's a library for it. Why rewrite no, the code? Like, like it'd probably be really easy to use. Like, yeah. Script kitty, baby. Script kitty. 